Okay, I've been asked a lot about my guitar sound and, and how I go about getting it. Um, and it's just led me to think about this question, ask myself this question. What is a good guitar sound? And I know that uh, a lot of different people will have a different concept of what's good, but there are several things that we can think of that uh, most people don't like, such as a harsh guitar sound or a thin guitar sound. Um, but sometimes a thin guitar sound is what's needed for the song, you know. Uh, sometimes a guitar sound is bright and that's a bad thing. Sometimes that's a good thing. So the way I'd like to approach it is ask these questions. How important is the gear to getting a good guitar sound? And how important is the guitar and the player? There's three different elements. You should be able to get a good guitar sound out of almost anything, like a decent guitar sound out of almost anything by using your guitar and the way you play your hands or your touch. You know, you got a tone knob, you got different pickup selections uh, on your guitar that, you, that can really make a difference to your tone, of course. But I tend to think of the sound, getting a good sound as number one, what kind of sound am I trying to achieve? Uh, what is the purpose for this guitar sound? Is it, a, is it a rock song? Is it a metal song? Is it a country song? Is it soft? Is it loud? And I approach it from there and instead of letting the, uh, let, letting the gear dictate uh, my tone, I tend to think of myself as coaxing the tone out of the guitar as opposed to letting the sound, letting the gear give me the sound and I'm just, you know, stuck in that sound. I like to think of it as I got a I got a objective. I got to I have a sound in my head, at least an idea in my head that I'd like to hear. And I try to go for that and there are several things that I do almost every time no matter what setup I have uh that will pretty much give me a good guitar sound out of almost any any piece of equipment, any amp any pedal board set up. Um, so we're going to explore a few of those tips and here we go. Alright, so here we go. So I'm going to go through the typical um, the typical way that I set up uh, a guitar patch uh, through Helix, but I also would take this exact same approach with my Vox AC30 and my pedals and that's what I love about this uh, this unit so much is that uh, with the Helix, the I think the strong point with that one is that you can craft almost any sound because you can add your own IRs, impulse responses, uh, and there's so many, so many modules that you can experiment with and really find your own sound. So with that, let's have a look at the screen. So I'm just going to grab an amp and a cab and I ju I'm just gonna go for probably a straight up rock sound that I can play blues on if I want to get heavy I can if I want to lighten it up I can and uh, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of a heavier amp the Marshall so it's a pretty good sound for rhythm it's not bad but if I wanted to do some lead, it's really bright and dry and boring. Especially on a Strat. But I picked this guitar on purpose because it's probably the most versatile. And, uh, you know, if you can get a good sound out of a Strat, Telly or Les Paul, then I think you'll get a good sound out of anything. Pretty good for rhythm, but for, for lead, not good. That's, that's kind of the opposite of a good lead tone that I usually go for. So what I would do, number one, is I would back off the drive, and I would approach this the same way if I had another amp, like a Marshall amp sitting on the floor. I'd, I'd back off that drive, but I do like a little bit of drive on amps. I don't like a totally clean amp. I want a little bit because I want to get some dynamics. That's a big thing. So if you want to get a good guitar sound, you can get a lot out of this sound by just backing off your volume knob, of course, and 
I also always, on my Fender guitars, I'll set the tone back to about 7. On my Telecasters and Stratocasters, I just automatically pull that tone back to 7. And that cuts back a lot, uh, cuts out a lot of the uh, high, harsh uh, frequencies. Right. So now if I, if I hit really hard, sort of semi-dirty, I go a little more dirty. Almost back up to where I was now, because of the tone knob is pulled back. So even with that sound right there, I can get some pretty pretty clean tones with a Strat by selecting a different pickup and pulling the pulling the volume knob back just a touch. So that's kind of a clean tone, and if I wanted to get dirty. That's a good place to start. Next, I would probably add some reverb. Um, nothing special. I'm just gonna stick to, I'm gonna stick to mono too. I'm not gonna do any stereo stuff. I typically like a stereo uh, reverb and delay if I can, but many times live you're not playing in stereo, so I'm gonna stick to mono for this. Uh, so let's do, let's just get, usually a hall. I don't really like rooms. Um, a touch of room is good, but I like a hall or a plate, so I'm just going to grab a hall with a kind of a lower decay, medium low decay, and bring the mix down a fair amount just to get a little bit of maybe a little more decay and less mix. I want it to enhance the sound, just carry the sound on a little bit, not, not to go too crazy. Okay. All right, next I'm going with the delay. I'm just gonna use the most simple delay that they have here. It's called simple delay. And uh, I'm gonna pull down the mix, and I usually like to go for tap uh, as opposed to milliseconds, so I can always tap in uh, if you can, but if, if I had to go milliseconds, I'd go, you know, 300, 400. That's too long for me. So actually, I'll go to milliseconds. Let's see. Too fast. Too slow. Okay, that's decent. I'll pull the mix back and the feedback down. And just to get a little bit of... Just a little bit of, of, of background delay. Now if I want to clean it up. So I'm going to go a little touch more reverb now. Touch more delay too, maybe. Okay, that's decent. Next, I would go with the distortion in the front, and nine times out of ten, it's a tube screamer. And the trick with the tube screamer is to keep your gain down and push your level up. And that usually works. A tube screamer for me doesn't work in front of a clean amp. It it works in front of a, a semi-dirty, just on the verge of breakup. And actually, if your amp is has a lot of gain, it it still works pretty good. <laughs> So it's a little buzzy sound for now, but... Getting better. So, I also usually like to put a little bit of uh, compression. Um, and the way I like to set my compression is... I set it so that I can barely hear it doing anything. I'll, I'll set it so that when I A, B, turn it on and off, I don't really hear a big difference. And then maybe turn it up a bit. Uh, so let's see. I'm gonna turn the distortion back off. And... Uh, 
Okay, so it's pushing the sound a little bit too much for me. It's got the level, so I'm gonna pull the level back. Threshold. Right around there. And the mix down a little bit on this one. Okay, so it's doing what I want it to do. I just want it to fatten up the sound a little bit. Smooth it out a little bit as well. So I'm setting the tone on the guitar again, just going back so it back to where it's too much, and then just pulling it forward to get get the right amount of highs that I want. Something like that. So that's a pretty good, useful rock tone right there. Um, <clears throat> but I find on this uh, in this plug-in, okay, the high cut is not bad there now. I like to pull the high cut down to about. Sometimes when I'm playing live, I'll pull it down to like three, three kilohertz. But even around the five mark, and the low cut is already up, so it's pretty good. So now I can clean that up. Touch more delay, touch more reverb. And then after the amp, I usually put some modulation. I like, I really like a chorus mixed in, a subtle chorus, especially in stereo. I love a stereo, like a stereo spread on my, my sound. So I go for a low speed um, and just mixed in so that you can kind of barely hear it, but you know it's there if you turn it off. And I find that really smooths out the tone. So here it is before. Here it is with it on. Very subtle. And sometimes I'll go more than that. Let's try distortion back on. Pull some tone back off of that, some high end. I'm also going to put a boost, a boost pedal before the amp, just try the boost and amp first. So that's gonna thicken it up again. Let's turn distortion back on. feels a lot better to me. So depending on the guitar, if it's a humbucker or a single coil, um, the sound is going to get much more distorted or less distorted. So yeah, I find that's pretty close there. Then, I, like if I'm using the Helix, I'll have some patches saved where I'll have a sound with more chorus. I'll have a sound with a lot more delay for a lead tone or uh, a sound with a big reverb for certain parts of the song. Um, so, uh, a sound with some of those turned off. Oh, last but not least, I usually always have a noise gate. So. And usually on the noise gate I'll set, I'll set the threshold to where it's noisy and then I'll gradually bring it up. A little bit is good. You don't want to go 
too crazy unless you're playing like really heavy music and or it's really noisy <laughs> So that's a heavier tone. So right from that, I can just go back to my amp and use go to like a pull back to volume if I need to. Go a little bluesy. the volume knob up for some dynamics there's so much you know there's so much there i, I don't want to make a, a video too long but dynamics are really important obviously and then, and that's a really important part to a good guitar sound i think is being able to hear the subtle differences in in that your volume knob makes and so i can go from from a cleaner needed a country course kind of sound I know that's a bit bluesy but if I needed the strum then if I just needed uh, to kick on a pedal and just hit a really quick way to dial it in I, I'd refine it a bit more than that you know but in general that's how I would approach any sound if it's uh, an amp pedal board like I said earlier and I think of uh, dynamics and I think of being able to control a lot from the guitar and cutting out a lot of those harsh high-end frequencies you don't really need utilizing your tone knob and a lot of it's it's in the way that you play as well so you could attack those notes and make them sound really bad you know really harsh or you can you can try to think of uh your hands and the notes are connecting in a way where you're you're coaxing the sound out of the amp to get what you hear in your head that's the cool thing about it this help you out um, I hope that you can subscribe and keep watching the channel I'm I'm trying to build it up as much as I can and I'm trying to connect with uh, a lot of you guys and I like to see the comments I read them all uh, thanks for watching till next time <laughs>